Hello, I'm Casey Dinges, Senior Managing Director for the American Society of Civil Engineers. Thanks for joining us today for a discussion on protecting our nation's power grid. My guest today is Otto Lynch. He is Vice President at Powerline Systems, a Wisconsin-based company that develops engineering software for the structural and geometric design of electric power lines. Recently, ASE named him a fellow for his work in transmission line engineering. Welcome, Otto. Thank you, Casey. America relies on an aging electric grid, some of which originated in the 1880s. Investment in power transmission has increased since 2005, but ongoing permitting issues, weather events, and deferred maintenance have contributed to an increasing number of failures and power interruptions. What do you think are the biggest issues our country faces with the energy grid? The biggest issue is congestion. We've got a traffic jam going on, uh, just much like in our cities, except you can't see it. Uh, and in order to elim eliminate that traffic jam, we need to build more transmission lines. However, the biggest problem with that is permitting. And uh, to, to permit a line, it takes about 10 years when we can build it and design it in less than a year. There are 27 federal agencies that have to be contacted and have to approve the permits. And oftentimes, many of the agencies will contradict themselves over how that's supposed to be done. So it's a very long process. The, the third thing that's going on is we're having a shifting generation source. We're taking coal fire plants from the east, we're putting in wind farms in the west, and our grid's just not set up to transmit the electricity across America that way. Is the power grid ready to withstand the next hurricane, Sandy? Sandy actually wasn't a hurricane, it was a superstorm when it, when it made landfall. Uh, in, in Sandy, we lost 80,000 distribution poles, but we only lost two transmission towers to my knowledge. Uh, the problem is, is that a lot of our distribution system is just under-designed. Some states like Florida and Illinois have stepped that up and are designing their distribution lines for higher wind and higher ice loadings, and they're seeing a success from, that, from doing that and having much more reliability in their systems. Um, are the states kind of off on their own on this, or you know, do they share information uh, you know, across the industry? How, how well does that work? Most states are on their own. The public utility commissions of each state are, are addressing this, and usually they're reactive. Uh, in Florida, it was Hurricane Wilma when it came through, and there were people without electricity for three weeks. And so they said, hey, we're going to do something about that. And uh, just as a result, the, the reliability of electricity in Florida has grown significantly in the past 10 years. Otto, you've worked on the ASC Infrastructure Report Card Committee. You've also done technical work on, on the transmission issues. What should ASC be doing right now? Or what is ASC doing, if you know? Well, ASC actually has a pretty good idea of what anticipated maximum wind and ice loads will be for the next few years. And uh, uh, we, we already designed our transmission lines to meet those minimum standards. Distribution lines, unfortunately, are exempt from those. And if they were to follow the ASE minimum standards, uh, our distribution system would be much more robust and reliable than it is today. And there is a, a, new, a new addition of the standard out. Um, yes, uh, ASE 7 uh, is the building code. We've taken that and have ASE 74 that says how to apply those loads, ice and wind, to overhead lines. Many power lines in the United States remain above ground and are susceptible to weather events and terrorist attacks. Why don't we just bury our power lines to prevent this? The biggest reason is cost. An underground distribution line costs 10 times as much as an overhead distribution line. Uh, transmission line multipliers even higher. It's just ri it's ridiculously expensive to do that. Uh, the other issue is just uh, reliability. When you have an overhead line and you do have an outage, you can find it and you can fix it quickly. If it's underground and there's an outage or something like that, you've got to find it, locate it, uh, you've got to dig it up. It can take a long time to fix it, and people don't like big holes in their front yards to, to correct the underground lines. That's an interesting point. And, and the, the third thing about that is water and electricity don't mix. And we found that out in Sandy because a lot of water got into the vaults. And, uh, and again, it took a long time for them to get the balls dried out. So uh, underground is not as good as it should be, especially when you consider the cost. Um, just so everyone understands, in your business, what does a vault refer to? Manhole. It's a manhole with a transformer. and uh, Where you have key equipment. Yeah, key okay. equipment and everything else, and those got flooded out. Um, okay. And it took a long time to get the water out and then to dry them, and a lot of the equipment had to be replaced. Many utilities using traditional generation sources, such as coal, are facing an uphill battle with the EPA and other environmental groups because of the carbon emissions they release. What are the barriers to moving away from traditional energy resources to renewable resources? 
The biggest barrier is, is reliability. The wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine, but yet the utility companies, they have to, they're required to provide electricity to their customers. Uh, so a lot of times that's just a difficult situation to be in. Uh, the other problem is basically, that, as I mentioned earlier, is we're having to put wind farms where the wind is in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. Uh, we're, we're, we're mothballing the coal plants in Ohio. We have to get that electricity from the western half of the U.S. to Ohio just to get it back into the grid to replace that electricity that's going out. It's not something that's too hard to do, but it does take a lot of, as I mentioned, permitting and uh, to do that, and it's kind of difficult. Aren't most of the new uh, energy plants going up uh, natural gas power plants? There's a lot of natural gas power plants, and the primary reason for those is, is, is to provide a continuous reliable electricity when the wind isn't blowing. They're, and, they're and, kind of like backup plants. And, and natural gas is less, less of a carbon issue than coal, but still a carbon issue. Yes, currently. Um, it's also currently very available right now, but that may not be the case in five or ten years. And, and certainly fracking and multi-directional drilling technology has been a bit of a game changer in, in that space. It has been a game changer, but as we've seen in Oklahoma, it may not be around much longer either. Otto, thank you for joining me today for this revealing discussion on our nation's power grid. For more information on ASCE's interchange program, visit ASCE.org interchange. Thanks for tuning in today, and we'll see you next time on the ASCE Interchange.